Okay, we're up to place Gimel. Based on this, we can understand the statement in the Gemara that a fetus, while developing in its mother, is taught the entire Torah. And then it is compelled to forget it. When he's born, the Malach comes and taps him on the lip, and he forgets the Torah. So the question is, what is the value of learning the Torah and then forgetting it? However, we now explain that since the necessity is to radiate the light of Hashem in order that there should be the fear of Hashem upon him and the love of Hashem and the fear in his heart, therefore we teach him the entire Torah, which is in a manner of makif, it creates the culture. And from there, it radiates out a light of Hashem and a power to have love and fear. And then it becomes forgotten in order that he have the virtue of personal labor to choose the good, like we say in uh, Shir Hashir, and Pischuli opened up for me. However, there is still a remnant of that experience that he had spiritually before his soul was completely encased, trapped within a physical body, which is what grants him the capacity to have uh, the light of Torah radiate within him, even post-embodiment of the soul, that he can transform the darkness into light, through the radiance of the light of love and reverence that radiates within Torah. Because this residue that remains from this experience lights up with Ava and Yira because of the residual impact that remains even after that incident that results in the forgetting. And this is what it means in Shira Shirim when it says, they are drawn after me and they run after me and they come to the king. Now, what does it mean they are drawn after me? That's talking about the future. And they have come after me, that is in the past. And seemingly it should have used a different grammatic phrase, Tavi Yenu. However, now that we explain that the word cheder, the, the, the uh, room, the, the private uh, uh, inner uh, dwelling, is an acronym for Ches, Chesed, Din, Dalid Din, and Resh Rachmin, Cheder, Chesed, Din, Rachmin. And in Das, Chadorim Yemolu, through intelligence, the roofs will be filled up. Because Das is the connector through the expression of the intellect down to the Midas. This is the standard process of Chabad. Think it and then feel it. And this Das and Midas that are drawn out from the laws of Torah, which are about the rules of what's acceptable, what's unacceptable, like it's explained in the in the Hagdam at the time. And in addition, the Torah opens up the inner keys, the inner dwellings, that is, that these inner places that we have come to in the past, that is, that the neshama was at one time uh, disembodied, before it had to come down into the physical world, where it learned all of the Torah, as we mentioned. Therefore, these are the chadara, these are these private areas through which it is, when even when it is invested in the physical body, it still is running after, it is drawn after, based on its prior experience. And now we understand the statement in Shir Hashirim that says, I have taken off my cloak. How can I now get dressed again? Meaning that once a person has forgotten Torah through this experience with the Malach striking him on the lip, if so, it becomes very difficult to once again uh, recapture that spiritual experience of Torah and mitzvahs, which are the garments. And this is what is emphasized in the Parsha Shlach, where it speaks about you should see them, referring to the tzitzis, and thus remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. Meaning, what is it that you see? You see the level of tzitzis. You see this tiny ray that is the white and the blue of the tzitzis, the Torah of the person that is expressed through the threads and through the hairs, that which is a makif and a garment. These physical mitzvahs, which are the mitzvahs of Hashem, they're not the essence of the person, like his love and fear of Hashem. They are the instructional that a Kaddish Baruch Hu puts on Tefillin and so on. And this is why he says, These are his mitzvahs, which is not the case with Yira. You can't be Hashem's Yira. That's the person's Yira. And these are what we remember about the blue and the white. And it is, what does the blue remind us of? It reminds us of the Leisase, because the Leisase compliance is driven by reverence. And the Lisa Surah, not to follow after our heart and our eyes and those other impulses, meaning that we should constantly have this idea that there is going to be distraction. And we don't say, well, I've already washed my feet. I don't have to ever worry about it. That, that concern is always going to be there. Even though the whole world tells you, you're a tzaddik, consider yourself as vulnerable as a, a Russia. What then is the white remind us? That's a mitzvah's assay. We're now in Dafim Dalim and Bays. These are all of the mitzvahs that we're supposed to be. 
And this is what it means that we should be Kedoshim, Yisem Kedoshim, meaning that the Ava and Yira within all of these mitzvahs should be elevated, so that they too are subsumed within this Or HaMaka, this Kedosh Then there's a Kitzer here. We explain that the intent of the Pasuk, that is to forewarn the person, this should be a constant reminder, the virtue of Kedusha and the mitzvahs Maisius, from whence we create the garments and the cultural surrounding, the makif of the neshama and the source of them, of it is from the Oren Saif, uh, that is, uh, uh, encapsulates him. Oita Or Kesalma, he is uh, crowned, he is cloaked in, uh, in light like a, like a garment. And other such statements that uh, the Alter Rebbe quotes that indicate this idea that the source of all mitzvahs is that they become a garment for the neshama. And what is the great virtue of these garments and its sanctity is that the person is reminded with uh, the vision of the tzitzis, that these are, again, only four strings that are drawn out from this garment. And from these four strings, two are blue and two are white. We draw out this level of love and fear of the intellect of the character of the essence of the Jewish people, Knesset Yisrael, which is all of the Neshamas. And this is what we mean, that the Torah is the person. If so, from these four strings alone, we draw at such a great level of love and fear of the Neshamas of the Jewish people. If so, what then is this great virtue of Kedusha uh, that we have in the intensity and so forth that is fulfilled through the uh, mitzvah actions and the Torah study that we enunciate, which is also a form of action, just moving our lips, and then the halachas, which are all are dealing with just physical things. So like the Arizal says, that the kedusha of the talus is greater than even the kedusha of the tzitzis, that is the garment, more than the strings, because they're only strings that express the garment. But because of their great characteristic, they cannot be inve- invested within the physical. And therefore, the talus kashmi doesn't have any physical kedusha. That's why if there's no strings on it, it's not a mitzvah. It's just a blanket. And that's why you could use it even to, to, to sleep with or whatever it is. But the tzitzis, because they are at a lesser level, so curiously, they can contain their godliness. And therefore, they, can, uh, they, they retain that kedusha. Almost to use an odd example, the author doesn't say this certainly, but it's like a very high quality garment is going to be ruined in the rain, and a low-quality garment can sustain the rain. Okay, now there's a further explanation. We're a mem daladam and gimel. The pasuk says, the eye sees, the ear, the, the heart desires, and so on. What does this mean about the eye, the, I'm sorry, the heart, and so on? We say the heart understands, the heart hears. The Arizal writes that the foundation, Yisait Abba, is in the chaz, in the forehead. So what is the Yisoyed? What is all of this? So we explain. Everything uh, has a form of hashpa to that which is less than it. The older person teaches the younger person. The taller person tells the shorter person. It's only, though, an expression of a lesser quality. When the teacher has to squat down and teach the student, they are expressing a, quote, lesser or less personal, intense level um, than they experience it at their own. <laughs> Why? Because that's all that the recipient can tolerate. And therefore, the mashpia has to be mitzamtim himself, and he has to connect himself with a quality that is going to be receptive by the mushpa, by the makabel. And this is what we mean when we say, Yisoyed Abba comes from the Yisoyed Ima, and it becomes the moichin for Zah. Now, what do we learn from this? That it is aligned at that level of the chaza, of the forehead, and it gathers together all of the lights in the heart, from all four of the names of the two Yesaidists that are brought into the Cheshman of, uh, 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 of Lev, a reference to a Kabbalistic idea. So here the Alter Rebbe explains with the Moshe that since Seichel comes from the Mayach and it's come sort of suddenly, all of a sudden you have an idea, and if a person was very closed in their Mayach, it wouldn't be revealed even within themselves. He wouldn't even understand it. But then as he starts to express himself from his Mayach, and he starts to share it outside of himself, it starts to become that much more tangibleized to the point that it excites his heart and it starts to animate his behavior and it starts to give it greater sustenance and endurance and so forth with a greater and greater way and it never shakes it, which is not the case when it's not by him. It's only in a level of seichel uh, that he starts to have uh, his battle with his heart 
because his heart is still interested in Tivus. So his intellect gets all excited about something and his heart wants potato chips because the heart is more embedded within the body. And even though he understands it, he still has to attach himself to it with intensity. And that's the ultimate goal. And nevertheless, it's possible that the heart could be drawn after Mishagasan, Tivus. Like it says, the heart begets all passionate. And that's why a person has to be on constant vigilance to battle via his seichel over his heart to direct them in every way possible in this uh, infinity of Hashem till he will desire to be attached to Hashem. And this is the idea of the level of the tzaddik and the chassid. A tzaddik, he's called, like the Pusik says, who is mighty, he who can control himself. That he has to constantly smother and con- contain his, uh, his impulses that they shouldn't override his seichel since the heart is much more rooted in Gashmias, and the seichel is towards godliness, and therefore there's this constant battle. And when he wins the battle, he's called the tzad, which is not the case when he trains himself through his veinness to the point that it, it embeds itself in the heart, and therefore the heart automatically becomes aligned, it becomes bottle, and it never deviates from it. That's a chassid. And this is what David Melech writes when he says, we're in Dafim Dadam Gimel, with the ultimate hatred, I hate them. That is, when he sees somebody who hates Hashem, he immediately hates that person, even though that person could have all kinds of virtues and they could be uh, lovable and they could have all kinds of physical and intellectual desirable traits. The mere fact that David loves Hashem so much instinctually means that he hates anything that hates his beloved and it overrides all their other redemptive qualities. And this is what David HaMelech meant when he said that he emptied his heart out because he only had love for Hashem. The intuitive love for material things had gone away. Now the Alter Rebbe brings it back to our point. Seichel has to be mashpia to something less intellectually oriented. That's called Yisait. And therefore, when we call Hashem Baruch Hu, we are calling him in this level. The, le- the word Baruch is this idea of connection. That is, that at that moment that he is connected to give life to us, at that moment, he can, it, nothing else can hold on to it. Because that level, Hashem has been mitzamtim himself down here. And at that level, there can be attack. Like it says, kulum b'chachmasisa. So these two yesodis that create the moichen of Zah, because Zah is called zayer, short or small. The seichel has been reduced. It has been contracted. And it is spread in all to give life to all of the worlds. And then it spreads all the way down through the body where there's a b- abundant expression of self. And it even creates the qualities known as Rachel and Leah. Nevertheless, the Arizal writes that Leah uh, nourishes from that which is above it. That is from Bina and Tvuna, and Tvuna and understanding. And Rachel also uh, nourishes herself from there, regarding which it says that Chachma, the highest, found, you saw the Aritz, the lowest, that is the level of Rachel, like we said, that the father is the source of the daughter, that everything comes from Chachma, and that's how it is. However, it seems that there are these two levels, Rachel and Leah, which can be referred to the idea, the Machshava, and the spoken word, the Dibur. Uh, Alma Disgasia, the hidden, which is just what I'm thinking, no one else knows it's hidden, and Alma Disgalia, what I say, which is more evident. And these are called the shallow or the backside, acharayim of seichel. It's not the seichel itself, but it's only the part of the seichel that can be expressed. And now we have to understand, what do we mean by concealed and revealed? That in Machshavah, there are also these oisius that he speaks. That what he thinks about, he speaks, but it's concealed. And we only, uh, he only knows himself what he means, what he's thinking. And then when he enunciates it, he does it well, then the other person also understands some aspect of what the, the communicator was thinking. Now, machshav and dibor come out through the midas because of what a person enjoys, he thinks about and he talks about. And the midas come from the seichel, that initially he has seichel in one area, and then there's a contemplation in that area that is spread out to the heart. And from there, it is spread out to the midas that he wants this or he doesn't want that. 
and his emotional attachment to it sustains it. And sometimes his intellect dictates that he should be desirous of something and the nature of the body doesn't allow it. But when he attaches his seichel to, the, to his heart to the point that it becomes embedded within it, he becomes bottled from all the midas, regarding which Yaakov, it says that Yaakov kissed Rachel. Now, of course, this would be permitted because it's not something acting out of lust or out of the uh, taivas gufnius. It's, be, it's a representation of an attachment to Hashem. Mm. And then it explains these letters of the machshava to the, uh, and their relationship to the letters of speech, where there's a greater revelation. And therefore, since the seichel comes from the meich to the lev, that it all comes from chachma, therefore, there is the characteristic of lev in all of these levels. That is, like it says, my heart sees, even though it's seeing, which is, of course, with the eyes, uh, hearing and understanding, because within the heart is this comprehension that these are the Yisraelis that bring all of them together, through which it becomes attached to the world. And a person has to be continuously vigilant to overcome the impulses of the heart and to uproot their improper machshavas and so forth, so that he remains attached with Hashem. Now there's a new mimer. It's based on, again, this uh, last paragraph, which we know is the third paragraph of the Shema. It's the end of Parsha Shlach. Now the Jewish people are called the bride, and Hashem is called the bridegroom. And Matan Torah Shavuos is called the day of our wedding. Um, what does this mean? We say, She was named Isha, woman, because she came from Ish, from her husband, from the man. The Jewish people are called Isha because they are a combination of Aish, fire, and Hashem. Because God created us with the hay. And the hay, the five forms of articulation and the spirit of the mouth, which is the source that created the 10 initial statements which the world was created. The statement that, uh, uh, through which each of these individual ideas were created. And the idea being, like it says, that hey is a soft letter. We're on mem dalad am dalad now. That it doesn't have substance. It's not a rigid letter. It's only a minor glimpse that comes from the air of the heart and the mouth to be a source of speech. That this doesn't touch to the very essence. It's only a very light expression that comes from the chitzenius. It doesn't have the samshachas bepnimis anefesh. Similarly, metaphorically. The highest that is drawn down in creation, Mi'ayin Liyesh, to fulfill the worlds and surround the worlds, is only also like the letter He, a very soft expression of self. That is from the level of Malchus, that is only an expression to something outside of itself, because a king needs to have subjects. And this expression of the Jewish people, the source of the Neshamas, that it should be a fire and a passion, that one should be enthusiastic and fiery to overcome the desires for material things and rather to become passionate about Hashem. That's Isha, Ish Hashem, the fire and Hashem. Like the Pasuk says, well, Ishech Shukaseich, to her husband or to the fire, there is her desire. Ner Havai Nishma Sadam, that the Nisham is called a candle. And just like the flame of a candle flickers and it sort of desires, we project an anthropomorphism onto it, that it wants to detach itself from the wick just like it was before it came into this physical world, uh, that it wants to attach itself to godliness and to be aroused to this level of godliness. But now that we understand that the highest has been brought down into creations from I into Yesh, and it's created the Am, and again, that means the smoldering coal, a very sense of distance from Hashem. So where is it going to get this power to suddenly reverse course and come, become completely subsumed within the infinity of Hashem? So this is the answer, because Isha, this fire, comes from Ish. That's why she was named Isha, because she came from Ish. Ish is Ish Yud, and the Yud is this Chachmila. The Yud is this small Nakuda, and this is the Chachma, that is this flash of inspiration that comes through the mind, through analysis that is revealed within the, within the mind. That Bina is an expansion upon this, in the long, in the depth, in the breadth. And therefore, we have this mushal that Bina is the world of taina, taina meaning pleasure, of course, not sensory pleasures, but the pleasures of the neshama, that they are aligned with the infinity of Hashem. And this, uh, this alignment is called yesh, like it says, lahanchil oive yesh, and it's called ganeden, but chachma comes from ayin, 
And this is that level of aid and the source of this pleasure or alignment. Just like a person doesn't yet have the pleasure of thought when it's still just a, the very beginning of the idea that scrambled around in his mind before it's been fully developed and nuanced and so forth, which is not the case in Chachma, where the timing is still in its source, it's hidden, because Chachma comes from Ayin, which is the level of Bitl Mamash and Erinsay. And Chachma founds the earth, that it should be drawn down into a total Bitl in the source of the Jewish people. And from there, it is expanded out, like it describes in creation, how the rivers were expanded out to the 600,000 Neshamas, which are the source of the Neshamas that are then branched out, and so on and so forth, that they should still have that bittel because they are attached to this level. This is the bittel of Isha and Ner. And this is what it means, Ner Havaya, meaning that it's drawn down from Havaya, to have a Neshama in the level of Ner. How is this going to happen from Chachmi Law until Gila Lamata? So this is, al Masha, like the uh, seminal drop that comes from the brain of the father that is necessary to first pass through the entire body so that there should be an expression through the 248 limbs, which is a representative of the 248 mitzvahs, the mitzvahs being kalim for the orange site that is invested within them, just like a person's limbs are kalim for their uh, the source of their life. And the mitzvahs draw out this level of chachmi law through this total bittal, of the Neshama Sutra uh, to the level of Isha, again, the fire of Hashem. Ner, which is Gematria 250, is like it says in Parshas, Zohar, in Parshas Trum in the Zayar, that this is the 248 mitzvahs that are drawn down here through the two levels, right and left, and there you get 250. Because this expression of the Orein Soif that is drawn down here is a level of Chesed and Mayim, just like Mayim comes from the heavens down to the earth. And it is drawn down to be here in this physical world the way it is up above. It's the same rain on the puddle on the street as it is in the cloud in the sky. Because the Olamites have no detachment. And there has to be a tzimtzum in order for there to be a yesh. And therefore, it is drawn down to this quality of Bittal, that the Bittal transforms from the yesh and, uh, and uh, redirects it, and it goes from a yesh back into an eye.